the only right you have is to pack up your bags and leave. But you can't get a right from a wrong. And so the international court have to decide what is the legal status of those settlements. Because if they're wrong, Israel can't claim it has the right to protect them because you can't derive a right from a law. Does everyone understand that? Not so complicated, but it's an interesting idea. I thought in any rate, learning about it. And then the wall itself cuts right through East Jerusalem, putting most of the Arabs on one side and putting most of the Jews, who are settlers themselves, on the inside of the wall. And so the court had to decide what's the legal status of Jerusalem. If Jerusalem is, if East Jerusalem is, as Israel claims, its indivisible and eternal capital, then of course they have the right to build a wall inside their capital. But if East Jerusalem is not part of their sovereign territory, a problem arises. So, what did the court decide? Now, bear in mind we're talking about the most controversial, we're told, the most controversial issues in the Israel-Palestine conflict, those final status issues. Number one, the question of borders. The court said, well, that's not very complicated. There's a basic principle of international law. The principle is it's inadmissible to acquire territory by war. No country in the modern world is allowed to change its borders through the use of force or by war. So for example, in 1990, when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait and then announced, or seemed to be on the verge of announcing, that he wanted Kuwait to become the 19th province of Iraq, the American president at the time, a fellow named George Bush Sr., he said that Saddam Hussein couldn't do that because under the principles of the UN Charter, it's inadmissible to acquire territory by war. Well, Israel acquired the West Bank and Gaza in the course of a war. And so the court ruled that under international law, Israel has no title to any of the West Bank and no title to any of Gaza that the West Bank and Gaza, to use the court's language, are the designated unit of self-determination for the Palestinian people. Number two, on the question of the settlements. Well, the court said, that's not a complicated question. Under Article 49 of the Fourth Geneva Convention, it's illegal for an occupying power to transfer its population to occupied territory. Israel is an occupying power. The West Bank and Gaza are occupied territory. Israel has no right to transfer its population to occupied territory. So the court ruled, quoting the United Nations Security Council, that the settlements and the settlers, they are a flagrant violation of international law. Number three, the question of Jerusalem. We're told that's a very complicated question. It's a very contentious issue. But the court said it's not complicated at all because Israel acquired East Jerusalem in exactly the same way as it acquired the West Bank in Gaza. It acquired them during the June 1967 war. It's illegal to acquire territory by war, 
and therefore the court said Israel has no title to any of East Jerusalem. And the court was very, very clear. It kept referring to the West Bank, comma, including East Jerusalem, comma, and the Gaza Strip as occupied Palestinian territory. And just as a matter of record, for those of you who had a chance to look at the report issued by Richard Goldstone, uh, he reaffirms all of those principles of international law, including twice in the report, he states unequivocally that East Jerusalem is occupied Palestinian territory. Well, that's half the story. Some of you might be thinking, okay, maybe the court ruled that, but there are 15 judges who sit on the court. And, excuse me? There are 15 judges who sit on the court. Maybe the vote was close. If the vote, for example, were eight to seven, or nine to six, or even 10 to five, one might legitimately make the argument that these are controversial issues. But that's just not what happened. The final vote of the court was 14 to one. The one dissenting judge being the American judge, Thomas Bergenthal. And on the issues which I refer to, borders, settlements, Jerusalem, allegedly the most controversial, not a single judge, literally, not a single judge expressed any disagreement with the decision of the majority on the court. Everyone agreed. Thomas Bergenthal, when he wrote his one dissent, what he called his declaration, he himself said, I have to state clearly, there can be no question that the settlements are illegal under international law. There's no dispute on that particular issue. And so now you have a kind of paradox which you have to um, resolve in your own mind. We're told that these are the most controversial issues in the Israel-Palestine conflict. They are the obstacle to a resolution. But when it comes to the highest judicial body in the world, there is no controversy at all. They all agree. Israel has no title to any of the West Bank and no title to any of Gaza. They all agree. Those are the those areas are the designated unit for Palestinian self-determination. They all agree. The whole of the West Bank and Gaza are occupied Palestinian territory. They all agree. That includes East Jerusalem. And they all agree that uh, the settlements are illegal under international law, a flagrant violation of Article 49 of the Fourth Geneva Convention. And so that obviously raises the question, is this conflict really very controversial? If the most controversial issues, once they're put before relatively conservative political institution, courts tend to be conservative because they operate on the principle of precedent. Um, it's put before a relatively conservative body. There's no controversy at all. And on all the issues, Israel's position, its official position, finds exactly zero support, easily calculable in mathematical terms, exactly zero support in the highest judicial body in the world. 